Welcome to Geared to Live, a weekly TV show brought to you by Choose Life International and the kindness of MTM TV. I am Dr. Donovan Thomas, president and founder of Choose Life International. We are continuing our theme for the month of February, Campaign for Love. And it is my delight to have for the first time on the show, the very distinguished Kevin and Muriel Bailey. Welcome to the show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, um, Brother Donovan. Thank you, Choose Life, for having us. Uh, great to be here. Great to be here. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's really such a joy to have you. You know, we have been talking about your own journey of love. Yes. How long have you been married? 32 years, 6 months, and 3 days. How many hours? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, she, she's the accountant, right? She's the accountant. All right, good, good, good. Yeah. So yeah. you guys met in high school. Or, yes. Yeah. Or just after. Just after high school, yeah. Community, in, college. community college, yeah. Excellent. So coming to college. So Kevin, yeah. was it love at first sight? Um, I think she loved me at first sight. Hardly. She just saw me Hardly. and my muscular um look and the fact that I'd be intelligent and I'm gonna do well in the future. She just look and love me. Hardly. But it must true. have been very futuristic because he was so slim. When I say slim, you know, you know, like when the back pockets meet, right? So slim, right? And he wasn't my, you know, he wasn't what I was looking in terms of physique. He was slim. He was from the country, in a real country bunking, but he loved the Lord and he was down to earth. He was just such a nice guy. So I liked him. But I liked him as a friend, not so much like a boyfriend, but a friend. Somebody I could talk to, somebody mm -hmm. I could feel comfortable with and so. So it wasn't love at first sight, but it was certainly friendship along the way. While we but you know, more and more we're finding out that's a good place to begin. Yes. To no. be good friends. friends. Totally. Yeah. So, so yeah. we move from good friends to... Mm -hmm. So, you know, two years that said coming to college and then we graduated. And um, amazing, she, she went on her way, I went on my way to work and so forth. And then one day um, I just remembered her and, and I started to search for her. So I asked friends, you know, you remember Muriel, you know, and so, and finally I got her number and I called her and then we reunite, you know, start to have conversation just as friends again, because yes. apparently I enjoyed her company. Um, and I remember, I don't know if this is her story, but I remember inviting her for lunch. Um, one day I was working at a construction company. Yeah, we, we used yeah. to go out a little, you know, I mean, not necessarily date, but just friends go places, go to lunch and go to, um, Go, go places and just sit and just chat, chit chat and so. And yes, one day Kevin did invite me for a special lunch at a place called Heat Wave. Heat what wave. a heat it was. <laughs> <laughs> but, but something happened, you know, I had to work during the lunchtime and I couldn't, we didn't have cell phone those days, I couldn't get to call her. And so. So she, I went to the appointed place and I stood up. And she was stood up. And, uh, you know, later on, when I could get a call, you know, I called her and I apologized. But even though she accepted it gracefully, I felt away inside. Like I just, I said, whoa. Lost it. I lost it. And that's when he realized that, that I liked he had her feelings for, for her. Me. Like that there was something special about her. And I wanted to, to take it a little further than just a platonic relationship. Yeah. What about her mm -hmm. that really just said to you, this is the lady you wanted mm -hmm. to take it further? Yeah. Um, at first I was attracted to her glasses, the fact that she wore glasses. And it's amazing, I never wore glasses then, but I thought once you wear glasses, you're brilliant. You, you, you know, like you're bright. Okay. It's afterwards that when I start wearing it, I realize it's not true. But, but, <laughs> but, not necessarily not true. Not necessarily it may true. be true for yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> so I was attracted by her intelligent, you know, like um, almost like a French school teacher, you know, with her glasses. And then I, I liked her shape too. I mean, what about that is all about Phil, but I like something but, about her shape. And then she was jovial. She was just humorous, just easy going. Her personality. Just personality. Yeah. And, and she just accepted me for who I am. That, that was amazing. Because I, I, I was Margo, you know, you could drink soup out of my neck, you know, my head round and shine and straight from the country. 
and I'm just here, and she just accept me as is, where is. It's amazing, man. I really felt so comfortable. And because I felt accepted and valued, then I wanted to spend time with her. And so I think and that... And so we kept spending time together because I liked him as well, but I liked <laughs> his personalities, down to earthness. He was very um, jovial. And if you know Kevin, well, he's a comedian. Everything is a joke. Everything is a laugh. You know, he can play a pun on words and all that sort of thing. So it kept me laughing and bubbling. And I liked that. And because of that, I wanted to spend time with him as well. I used to go to his church. He used to go to church all the way in half of you. I used to go to his church sometimes to concerts and things they were having, but we still weren't having an intimate relationship. In fact, I tell you a secret, we don't even know when it changed. From just friend, friend to, you know what I mean? But we just know that there was some progression at some point until we had to break and have a discussion on the matter and say, well, yeah, it looks like this is where it's going, so let's do this. Yeah. So when did you realize, Kevin, that yeah. she was the one? Right. So I, I, I think um, I realized when I stood her up and I realized that, oh my gosh, I cared for her. Because I'm wondering, why is it that it, it, it haunted me like that? Why this girl? And I think from that time, you know, and, and then when I thought of it too, we're doing other things together. She loved the Lord. I love the Lord. We're in Youth for Christ. We're, we're doing things with UCCF. Um, so I, I just said, but this is the girl that I, I, I love, I like, and I could see myself having a future with her. Then she was sensible, like intelligent, like, like um, even like for savings. Like she was the one that, that taught me how to save. When I came from the country, there was no bank. There's, there's no place to put money. We just spend money. So when I came in town, you know, I just remember she used to ask me one day, like, like Kevin, how is your savings? So I said, save what? Like Jesus save you. Jesus save you. No. <laughs> That's all you know. No, honestly, like, we weren't taught, we weren't socialized to right. save. Yeah, I was a, concerned, I mean, yeah. like, when he get his pay, then somebody would just come from the country where he come from, from Cedar Valley, he buck up the guy in halfway tree, and the guy said, boy, you know, such and such is happening, and, you know, and Kevin would just take out money and just give him, because that's how Kevin is, kind of hearted, and so, but at the same time, he's not remembering that well, boy, oh, but he has his own expenses and all that sort of thing, so that was the challenge there. He would give, he was kind, but he wasn't, you know, 50, he wasn't thinking steward. of saving there, you know? Obviously, there are several things that we can learn from your own journey. Yeah. What was premarital counseling like for him? Ah. So, premarital counseling, met with our elders from the church. Right, because we decided, no, because we were going on forever. We, we courted for about six years. And, you know, church people, wow. you know, church people. So when are they getting married? married. When are not getting married? You know, it's the same time to get married now. I always said, oh, watch that, man. When the, when the right time comes. So we courted and courted until we decided now that, okay, we want to get married. We think we're sure. We know we're sure that we want to get married to each other. Let's, you know, let's approach. He came to approach my dad. Because my father was an elder at the church I went to at the time. So he came the Sunday afternoon to speak to Dougal and he... He said, do you have a pair of socks can lend me? So, because he felt that he was being disrespectful and just coming with him, for pushing him shoes. He believed, he believed to me, the elder, he should have on socks, you know? And that's, that's Kevin, very respectful. So I let him a pair of dark color socks, he put on him socks and then come and speak to my father and say, this is my intention and so on. My father gave him the blessing. Unfortunately, my mother had passed by that time. You know what I mean? By the time- But she had, liked me. She did. She met me before. We had right. a great okay. relationship. Right. Right. Yeah. she did. And so we said, okay, we need to tell the yeah, leaders at the church. And we met with them on Thursday afternoon, and that was one meeting with them, and that was a pre-marital counseling. You remember, Kevin? Yeah, so how it was now, the elders came, they wanted to know, you're a Christian, you're a Christian, how did you get saved? And then I remember one thing, one elder said, you know, don't be in a rush to have children, because when you have a child, it changes everything, because you and the child will be vying for the same breast. And that was, <laughs> I never forget that, you know. The <laughs> ultimate that, that was pre the only pre counseling. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kevin, you are in counseling now. Yes, you are an yes. associate counseling psychologist. Yeah. You are a part of the team at Family Life yeah. uh, Ministries. Talk to us about the value of proper premarital counseling. Oh, gosh. You know, amazing because the, the research <laughs> says that um, most marriages fail because of poor preparation. You know, the, the term um, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Right. Yes. So when you are prepared, premarital yes. counseling really should be, you know, between eight to twelve weeks of looking at all the areas. 
that is going to affect you when you get married. People just look at the wedding day, but not the marriage. So you're talking about family of origin. How did that impact you? Are there wounds from your past that you need to be healed up so you don't care for with that? How you manage money? How do you look at in-laws? Communication styles? Managing conflicts? Job reversals? Mm -hmm. Parenting? There's so many areas that you need to properly ventilate before marriage. You know, there's a saying, before marriage, keep your eyes open. After marriage, keep it off shut. And, and it is true. Before marriage, you have to do due diligence. So people are getting married, but they don't know each other. They don't know themselves. And it's a shock for them because marriage is such hard work. And normally, say, if you have been married for more than two weeks, you know it's hard work. Because you have to put in so much. And then people try to get married because they want to be happy. And then they're shocked because the other person <laughs> waiting to be happy as well when they should have been happy before. So premarital counseling is extremely important. And this is something that we want to encourage young people to do. Like, just to spend the time or the money. People spend lots of money, you know, on the wedding, the day. wedding day. And forget about the marriage, which is until death do us part. Right. So put aside some money. Do some pre really premarital counseling. Prepare yourself. And that's different from pastoral counseling. Yes, premarital counseling. Really, again, there are pastors who are prepared and are trained to do it. But not all pastors are trained to do premarital again. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because you, you really have to look at some specifics. And then you have to know when to do referrals. Because if you come up on cases, for instance, like um, rape and, and sexual assault or, you know, different stuff that you can't manage, you need to refer that so that the person can get individual counseling to work through the healing, then come back and do the, the, the premarital. Mm -hmm. Because right. when, when you are bruised and wounded and traumatized, you're looking for somebody else to be your savior, and that is wrong. You, you're, it's too much weight on another individual for your happiness. You should have your own right. internal so, health. So and we're saying, before. don't outsource your happiness. No. <laughs> and we're saying it is critical yeah. that we invest time yes. and resources mm -hmm. into proper premarital counseling. I'm yes. grateful. Yes. to Dr. Barry Davidson for the counseling that yes. Faith and I had yes. uh, probably um, six weeks, 12 weeks or whatever, I don't even remember. Right. But what I Best knew way. is that yeah. my own experience is that many of the issues that we spoke about in premarital counseling yes. actually came up in the marriage and we were saying, oh, uh, that's you. We, we were taught about you already. <laughs> and so we ready? say to you out there, you're planning to get married, invest time in premarital mm -hmm. counseling. Yep. It helps. Yes. Well, we just by the grace of God that you guys have survived. It, it, I'm telling you. It, it, no, it is. And, and I think what helped us in it's amazing. Foundation of is the friendship. foundation of deep friendship. Mm -hmm. Did you know, you know, Dr. Thomas, that one of the research is saying, you know, uh, three things that really keep sustainable relationships like marriage. And one of them is deep friendship where you like and love each other. Yeah. No, that's amazing because you're going to spend a lot of time together. You have mm -hmm. to like and love each other. It's just I like, like in this pandemic. Oh my in gosh. This pandemic. pandemic here. So deep mm -hmm. friendship, mm -hmm. you know, because the world just look at passion, look at the sensual, sexual connection. And, 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 and so they are in the physical stuff, how you look, how you feel, which is a part of love, mm -hmm. but intimacy into me, you see, into yeah. knowing the character and the personality of the person and their fears and, and their hopes and the struggles that they go through, being vulnerable and open and you can be your authentic self. Like, like Muriel, if, if you want to know me, just ask Muriel. Anything she tell you, believe her. Mm -hmm. Anything she tell you. And then my son know. Anything him tell you, again, believe him. And catch him when he vex. That's the best time that they can tell you who I am. Because we, we have been allowed to be authentic. Yes. Not perfect, imperfect. But that's amazing. Like, real. Like, real. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Muriel is perfect for me. And I, I'm so happy for that. Uh, she's not and perfect. And is perfect for me. Yeah. So, so, so we get to have that kind of synergy. So the deep friendship is another big thing Critical. I would say to people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. your son. Right. So you got married, you went into parenting. How did that change for you? <laughs> All right, so we got married. We did about six years of courtship. You know, just finding ourselves as individuals and making sure that we are happy first, as Kevin says. And then we got married. And then even after we got married, we didn't have a child immediately. Remember? The premarital counseling said, well, we should, well, <laughs> <laughs> right, we know. Right, don't take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 
about six years later before we had our son six almost seven years later into our marriage we had our son and um he was uh he was a gift from god samuel mm -hmm. he was a gift from god because initially we didn't really plan to have children between both of us we said we like children, but other people's children, they come home, they come and then they go back home and all that sort of thing. <laughs> but the Lord, and so we had discussed and agreed before marriage that we weren't going to have children. We were going to just go together, serve the Lord together and just be strong together. But the Lord spoke to me and he spoke to Kevin separately. And it's almost uncanny the way he spoke to us because we had already agreed no children. So when the Lord spoke to me, I said, how do I tell Kevin this? Because we already agreed. And it's the same thing with Kevin. Kevin has said, then how am I going to tell Muriel this? Because we have already agreed. And we are driving home one day and right along the highway, right near Heidel there. Um, we, I don't remember who brought it up first, but somehow we started that discussion and say, you know, I think it's about time we could have a child. We could try to have a child. We don't know if we can or not, but let's do that. And then we share what the Lord had shared with us. So long story short, we decided to try for a child and bam, then came Samuel, but he didn't come immediately because Kevin was a little bit of disobedient to the Lord because the Lord gave him the name for the child. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a male child and I'm going, I want you to call him Samuel. Right, so the Lord gave him the name Samuel, but he said, no, I want Junior, Kevin Junior. And he and the Lord battled and so, and one day at 2.30 in the morning, he said to the Lord, you know something? What do you say to the Lord? Okay, it's okay. This is how it is now. I call him Samuel and I'll just give him my middle name. So, okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. And right. then right after that, according to the um, statistics, that's when I got pregnant. Okay, great. Okay. So we praise the Lord for obedience. <laughs> yes. Obedience to yes. the Lord. Yeah. Um, but you, both of you are professionals. Mm -hmm. But you, Kevin, decided that you were going to accompany your wife yes. and to keep home yeah. while she worked in Bermuda. Yeah. Uh, how did you arrive at that? So, yeah, so I went first, paved the way, so I was there all by myself for 88 days, but we used to call, and those times we never had my whole for cell phone and all that, but I said, you sure you guys want to come? You know what I mean? And Kevin said, yes, I want to come, and he was coming to have a break from work and to just um, cool and relax, and we'd, we'd get somewhere into school. But when Kevin came, and after about three weeks, he decided, said, no, he didn't want to be a house husband. He didn't want to be at home. He wanted to work. Yeah, so and, and that said, was a challenge, no? So... Um, I'm there, nobody knows me, etc. And I was wondering, how am I going to get the job? So Muriel says, well, go to the directory and, and choose. You know, you're a counselor. So I went through and I found 10 places, counseling centers, and I called nine of them, no vacancy. And the last one said, um, I'll leave your name and number with the clinical director. Half an hour, she called me and she said, I heard you were inquiring. Did you see the advertisement running for the last two years? Two weeks. And I said, no. She said, well, could you come in for an interview tomorrow? And the short of it is, I got a job. They were looking for someone, you know, with the, the, the master's in counseling psychology and two years clinical experience, and I had the qualification. So I got it. Um, thank God, the Lord provided. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You have been watching Gear to Live, and my guests today are Kevin and Muriel Bailey. And what a couple they have been. Kevin, you've been involved in these training seminars. You've been involved in just one-to-one -one counseling this pandemic time has just kept you busy how have you been able to make time for your wife you know, in this no, time thank you for the question but it has been hard i mean we, we never expected this i've never worked so hard in my life for the last two years um but one thing has helped us is, is to create a structure so for us um in the morning just being able to turn over and to say good morning wifey good morning and she'd say good morning husband and to touch each other, just to make a connection. Um, we, we had, we had and we do a feelings check as well. How are you How are feeling? you feeling? We'll yeah. ask each other, how are you feeling today? And and, that, and listen to each other. Um, that, that is helpful. Then we would kiss, because we, we practice kissing. Um, that, that's like a ritual. So even if you vex, you get a vex kiss. So, so <laughs> <laughs> because we have a foundation of friendship and we've done a lot of things together then even during this pandemic we find that we like each other's company we spend a lot of time together and we like each other's company so when kevin is not working sometimes we play like a board games and sometimes we go walking different things different activities together because i mean if we didn't like each other the amount of time we have to spend together even when it's lockdown time and so then i don't know how we manage yeah. but but you are a very yeah. busy person too you have a, your own business you work with a financial institution, 
Uh, so it's two busy people planning for each other, it seems. Right. But then because we have a lot of commonalities and we did a lot of things together before, then during the pandemic, we just compartmentalize sometimes time for each other to do things. Like date night, we still maintain date night. We, we decide Friday nights are normally our date night. So even when you can't go out, we decide to watch a movie or we play Monopoly or play um, this game, Sorry. or So we have different games, card games or mm. so. Um, we decided to do some Bible stories, like, like children Bible stories. It's a funny Bedtime thing. Stories. Bedtime stories. That's amazing. Just the color of it. I'm saying, let us read this together. We're going through all the Bible stories again, um, separate from our devotion um, together. Yeah. Uh, so that is helpful. And then also on overseas, you now we connect once a week um, to have devotion to them and chit chat and check in family time. Um, family time. So, mm -hmm. so the structure really has helped us. And then we're, we're looking beyond the pandemic. We're, we're saying, you know when this is finished because you know it too will pass yeah and then the opportunities that we have mm -hmm. it's just amazing because all things are working together for good yeah. because we love god and we're called according to his purpose mm -hmm. so we're looking out for the opportunities and we're seeing many opportunities as well to love each other deeply to share and then to impact the lives of others as well. Miriam, i'd like mm -hmm. to speak to some wives who are watching this program who are having difficulties with the with, the, with their husbands at this point in time. What would you say to them? All right, so I would say, I mean, I can understand some of the difficulties because as Kevin said, he's not perfect. He's perfect for me, but he's by, by no means perfect. Sometimes some of the difficulties we have is things like where our husbands have their own agenda and we have ours. For us, we try to do as much as we can together and to really build our relationship. It's important to remember that we're on the same team. It's really important to remember that this is not my enemy, although he thinks differently from me. We are on the same team. We want the same thing. So what I try to do is try to kind of have that riveted in my head so that that kind of guides my my action. So sometimes even when I'm angry and so, I have to breathe and say, okay, we're on the same team. The enemy is on a different team from us. Let me not say anything that's going to be too hurtful law is going to go too deep or so let me stop and you know what I mean and think and say okay what's my best reaction so my my advice to wives out there is try and remember you and your husband you didn't get married to be apart you didn't get married to get divorced you got married to stay together and to love each other so remember that you are on the same team and you can work together Kevin what would you say to husbands yeah. um, just take a minute right. speak to some husbands and take a minute and just pray for couples and families right there. So, so I'd say, um, remember, it's unprecedented. Things are changing. And it's an opportunity for you to, to really value your wife. It's, she's a blessing to you. So just change your mindset and, and start complimenting her instead of criticizing her. Celebrate the differences. Won't you celebrate, not tolerating, just shift your mindset. Because remember, as a man, think it's so easy. So in, instead of seeing her as this beautiful person that God has blessed you with, a help meet and accept all that she has. And guess what? Change the paradigm if you don't like what you're getting. Remember, you know, the two you decide on your marriage, the two you decide on the marriage that you want, so you can decide to change it for there to be happiness and joy and peace and encouragement. We're not perfect, but we can keep growing. So I want to challenge husband to do that and to pray for her and to pray together and play together um, as well. So and hopefully... Yeah. To love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Wouldn't, himself for her. Take a moment, amazing. Kevin, and just pray over our viewers right now. Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord God, for choose life and, and those who are watching, those who are listening. Father, we know that the enemy only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But you have come to give life and abundant life. And so, Lord, we release life, we release forgiveness, Lord, in relationships. Lord, we pray, God, that they'll recognize that they're fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God and that you have caused relationships to be together, to manifest your love, to speak of the relationship between you and the church. And so, Father, we pray that there'll be a shift, Lord God, that, that love again will flow in the name of Jesus, that there'll be forgiveness, Lord God, and, and love and patience, Lord God, as they rebuild their relationship, that your kingdom will come. In their lives as it is in heaven in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Kevin and Muriel, thank you so much for being my guest today thanks, thanks, thanks for having thanks. us really appreciate it i want to invite you to call up some people 
and to have them view the show with you. Remember, every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. with rebroadcast on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Remember also to join us on our Zoom webinars every Sunday evening at 5 p.m. 516-152-2200 with password Choose Life. This Sunday, our topic is Fireproof Your Marriage and Faith Thomas will be our presenter. See you next week. Same place, same time. Shalom.